That brings me to point number five. Giving is not a matter of command. It's not a matter of command. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And we'll see it there again. He said in verse 8, he says, I speak not by commandment, but I am testing the sincerity of your love by the diligence of others. I want to test that love that you say you have by provoking you, by saying to you, see what the Macedonian churches did. See what poor people have done. See what people going through afflictions have done. And you have, you have the means. So what is stopping you? That is, what, that is my goal. My goal is to, is, to, is, to, is, to, is to test your sincerity by challenging you with what others have done. I'm not there force. I'm not trying to force you. I'm not trying to command you. I'm not trying to, 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 to compel you to do anything. No. I am merely testing what sincerity is in your heart. So it's not by command. It is about you and I recognizing our responsibility to the body as well as others. You see, if you do not think that you are responsible to your local assembly, to the body of Christ, you are going to act anyhow. And there's a lot of that taking place. Even the people who are teaching on giving, they teach only to give to their, to their work, to their, to their ministry. To, they, they, they don't care about giving to other people. They don't care to, about giving to, to, to the needs of others. We speak so much about it that we, we, we I mean, for example, I had one, 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 one church where the pastor was encouraging them to, to build a church in their villages. And I'm wondering, are there no churches in those same villages? Are there no missionaries in those same villages? What are you trying to build another church for? When there are churches meeting in those villages, why not support the missionaries there, the ministry in that place? Why build another one? What are you build, putting up a building for? Why not put up a building? Okay, you must put up a building, fine. Why not put up the building for that missionary? Why put up one that, you will, that will have the name of your church? You can tell that has nothing to do with God. It's about man. And if it is God that told them to do it, then it, it, they are not hearing correct, correctly. Because God will not ask you to go and put up a building where he sent somebody else to. So that you can go and collide with the person. He won't. He would rather be asking you to go and support that person that is there. We need, to get our, we need to get our bearings right. We must come out of these fleshly, lustful things and get into the spirit of God. A -a Again, um, um, verse, I think we read verse, eight, verse 9 now. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. This is a, a much maligned and abused text of scripture. What it is saying here essentially is that when the Lord Jesus Christ came, he emptied himself into us. He gave his life so that we might have life. He gave of himself so that we might have what we could not have. So in that sense, he became poor. He emptied himself that we might have, we might become rich. It is not that he, he emptied himself so that we can have money. That is not it. And he said that as a means because he said it after he said, I'm not commanding you. I'm testing the sanctity of your love by the diligence of others for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. How he, how he, he, even though he was rich, he emptied himself. So he said, Corinthian church, you are rich. Empty yourselves. That's what he said. So that others might become rich through your poverty. But here he said, look at the churches of Macedonia. Poor churches. The little that they didn't have, they gave. In John chapter 10, verse 18. John 10, 18. The Lord Jesus made a comment. He said, no one, talking about his life, he said, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. 
I'm not, I'm not commanded to do it. I'm not forced to do it. I desire to do it. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. That is his life. We have power to use money as we want to. We have power to give. We have the power with us. When we go to uh, Acts chapter 5 and we look at um, Sapphira, Ananias and Sapphira, we will see that they had the power to do whatever they wanted to do with the money. But they shouldn't have lied. That was the problem. They lied. So the Lord says, of my, of my, I have power. He says, this command I have received from my father. I have the power to take it. And because it's my father that commanded me, I'm ready to do it. Don't forget, it is about doing the will of God. If you are going to do the will of God, every will of God is a command. God does not command it per se. It is, his, it is what he wants. But we do it. And because we, we say we want to do the will of God, we see the will of God as a command. Remember, one time the Bible tells us about how David was in a place in, in Adullam and he longed for the waters of Bethlehem. And three of his men broke through the Philistine camp to go and fetch water from a well. The, the whole Philistine garrison had taken over the Bethlehem. But they broke through just to go and get water from a well and come back. Because their commander said, I feel like. David said, wow, these men, they give their lives for this purpose. That is what is being, that is the kind of thing I'm, we, are, we are saying here. That giving is not commanded. Is it, we see it as an obligation. We want to do it. Because it is, it is something that our, our Lord wants us to do. It is something that pleases our Lord. It is something that makes him happy. The Lord became poor. He gave his life so that we might have life. And have it how? Have it fully, more abundantly. That's what he said, that we should have it more abundantly. In 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16 to 18, he says, By this we know love, because he, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. That's what it means. Though he were, poor, though he were rich, yet he became poor that we might be rich. He said, you now in turn, with your wealth, empty yourself so that others can be rich. Because he laid down his life for us, and we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world's goods, and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? How does the love of God abide in you? When you have, I'm not talking about when you don't have, when you have, that you can help somebody and you shut your, your heart from that person. Why? In verse 18 it says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Enough of I love God, I love God, I love God. Let us see it in action. In your, by your deeds, we will know whether you love God or not. There are needs in the church that can be met, not only with money. Yeah, I mean, if you tell somebody now to come and do something uh, 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 in, 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 in a church or in a, in, a, in a church setting or in a ministry or something of that sort, the next thing is going to be thinking of is, how much are they going to pay me? That's all they think of. How much? How much will it cost? Uh, how much will you pay? How, that's all we're thinking of. We don't, the, 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 the time when people did things and left it in the hands of God, those times are over. But by the grace of God, those times need to come back. I remember when I went, to, when I went into to, to full-time ministry in, in one of the churches in those days. I didn't even know that they, were, that they paid. I just applied. And then they, 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 they sent a letter and said they would pay me. I, I was shocked. Because all my thinking was that you serve God and nobody pays you anything. God will take care of you. That's how I always saw it. After a while, it became a matter of how much are they going to pay. Before it was, <laughs> we didn't know that we were going to pay. Suddenly people were not thinking, how much? This amount is too small. This is too, this. And we, be, the moment it became known that in serving God, they paid you. The whole place was flooded with people. Wanted to suddenly serve God. 
People who did not have a heart to serve now flooded in, especially when they have lost their jobs in the secular. They quickly run to church to pick up a, a, a job. So they were not serving from their heart. They did not see it a responsibility on their part to serve God. They're only there because, well, I have nothing to do or I've been sacked. So let me go and do some things. Some people will serve until they will, they will work in the secular until the age of 60, 65, when they are now compulsively retired. Then they now come to church. They come to a church organization, an institution, or a ministry and say, now I can give my all to God at 65. When all you are going to be doing will be in and out of hospital so that the church will be paying your hospital bill. What your employers before were paying and they're no longer paying now that you have left. You now want the church to be paying your, your hospital bill. You are now 65. In Galatians chapter 6, again, we are urged not only to look at the church, that is the, 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 the uh, what do you call it now, the children of God, but also others. It says, and let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, to all especially to those who are of the household of God. When you say especially, it means that it, it, he said, yes, these people particularly. However, don't ignore the others. To all. We must see it as responsibility, that we have responsibility to the body, number one, and then to others. You, you cannot be a part of the church of God and you are known as a stingy fellow. Say that fellow, don't want it, doesn't give anything to anybody. It doesn't help anybody. 